Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Nicola. Uh, I work as a freelance Zabbix consultant uh, from Italy. And uh, I'm really grateful to uh, having the opportunity to speak uh, here uh, at the Benelux conference. And uh, please let me bring to you uh, the greetings from uh, Italian Zabbix uh, community. Uh, this speech uh, is going to be very easy. I will share some uh, uh, advice, some solutions uh, to solve problems uh, which arise in distributed environments like uh, notification flutes, uh, false positives, and uh, uh, flapping alarms. This work is based on a three years project with BTEC, which is an Italian managed services provider. Uh, if you are a provider, monitoring provider, you typically deploy a single uh, central Zabbix server instance to monitor several independent remote customers. Each customer has one or more Zabbix proxy, proxies deployed into their local network. And often they are active proxies. They connect to the Zabbix server using the internet or some other unreliable connection. So this is what we call monitoring as a service. Your customer are going to pay you for uh, monitoring their infrastructure. And of, of course, they want to receive notification when problems arise. And in our experience, uh, we see that if uh, false positives are more than five or 10% of total notifications, your users will stop trusting information coming from Zabbix system. And if you flood them with hundreds of email and telegrams and notifications, they will probably not be able to understand what's happening and uh, what to do. So most likely they will create that infamous Outlook rules and to get rid of your message and game over. They will not use your Zabbix service anymore. So we need to start from the very beginning. How do you say if a server host is up or down? In most monitoring systems, you just ping by ICMP. Zabbix templates, Zabbix templates, the fault templates, use agent.ping uh, to check availability. How does it work? Very simple. The Zabbix server connects to the agent port and says, hello, are you alive? And the agent answers, one, which means, yes, I'm up and running. If the host is down, no one can answer, so Zabbix server does not, got, does not get any data. And that's why we need to use the no data function to detect, to detect problems. For example, if we get no data for five minutes, we trigger this alarm. This is quite useful because uh, this trigger can catch a lot of problematic situations. For example, if a host is down, but also if host is up, but agent, agent is down, we get no data. If agent is unresponsive, we get no data. So we, um, it's better than pinking. It catches a lot of problems with one single check, but it doesn't tell what problem we have. So how can we know what's happening? We need to manually investigate, of course. And can we ask Zabbix to do it for us? Uh, before answering to this question, please have a look to this, uh, to this scenario. When a Zabbix proxy is monitoring several agents, and suddenly the Zabbix proxy goes down. Of course, the Zabbix server, which is uh, somewhere in the left side, does not get data from the agents. So, uh, a lot of triggers is going to activate. 
If you have hundreds or thousands of, uh, of agents monitored by that proxies, I'm sure you know what's happening. Have you ever seen someone at the restaurant during a romantic dinner uh, trying to shut up their mobile phone with a girl getting nervous and nervous? Uh, this is a notification fluid. What's the problem here? The problem is that no data function also triggers upon known agent problems, like a proxy going down, like a Zabbix server connectivity going down, or also if Zabbix server has performance issues. For example, it cannot insert data into its database, so he, he has not that data about all the agents. Of course, there are a lot of solutions to this. I would uh, not recommend in, uh, I would not recommend creating a triggers dependency, which uh, require a lot of manual work. Uh, there is a couple of uh, Zabbix feature requests, which are very interesting in the near future. And of course, you can have fun with event correlation if you want. But this problem looks really simple. Why do we have to deal with complex solutions? Uh, is, can we make things easier? Yes, with, with Zabbix we can. The idea is using, using multiple items to determine what's happening. For example, I can use an ICMP ping item, a TCP connection to the agent port, and of course, our hold agent ping item. By combining information coming from these three items, we can say what's happening. For example, if ping is down and TCP connection is down, we may say that hosting is reachable. If the ping is up but TCP connection is down, so host is up but agent service is down or blocked by a firewall, we don't know, Uh, another situation is uh, ping is up, agent port is up, but we get no data from agent ping. In this, in this situation, the system, the operating system is probably overloaded, so the Zabbix agent cannot transfer to our request. If we get no data for any items, we can say anything, actually. But probably it, this is not a host issue, it's a monitoring issue. Oh, this is, a, this is a wonderful situation for every administrator. Everything is up, but also please note that if uh, this situation, if ping is down, but we can connect to the TCP agent port, uh, this is quite enough. The host is, uh, is up. So, uh, this is the slot machine template, and uh, having separating triggers allow us to send notification to the right team. For example, the networking team, the monitoring team, or the system administrator. Please have a look to the gray row, because that situation was the one who triggers the notification fluid. Now we are going to uh, not notification anyone. Let's have a look in the details to the triggers, but they are very simple. Uh, this is the first one, host is unreachable, just check that ping is down and TCP service is down. Uh, what's the point here? The point is that these two items return a value on failures, a zero, so you don't need to use the no data function, and that makes all the difference. The second one trigger, agent, is, agent service is down, is also very easy. Don't uh, uh, forget to configure a, a dependency on the previous trigger in order to avoid a, a duplicate notification. The third one is a little bit tricky, but uh, 
I will show you. We can connect to the agent TCP port, so host must be up and agent must be up. We do have data for ICMP, so the proxy and the server are properly working. But at the same time, we have no data from agent. So the agent is unresponsive and the operating system has some problem. A performance is overloaded, uh, is blocked. Perhaps a, a kernel panic could be the case. The trigger expression is uh, easy, and I can suggest to uh, define the recovery expression. We are very happy if we, if we can receive uh, 10 ping from agent in 30 minutes to recover this trigger. And please also remember to choose large time intervals to avoid flapping as some other situation uh, uh, with which can lead to race conditions. So, so far, if the process goes down, we don't get notification fluid. But we uh, still need to know that the proxies went down. So, how do you detect Zabbix proxies failures? As I told you before, a remote proxies, a remote active proxies, often sits behind a firewall. So you cannot connect directly to, to it from Zabbix server. So if a, is, if a proxy is unreachable, we simply observe a lack of data. Oh, not again. We should use the no data function. Not exactly, because Zabbix provides this item which returns the last access time your proxy is uh, connected to the um, Zabbix server, so you can uh, process it with the, the fuzzy time uh, uh, function to trigger if, uh, for example, this proxy does not connect for one minute or more. Of course, this could mean proxy source is down, the service stopped, or the entire side is unreachable. Uh, probably a network loss or, or a power loss. So, very simple. Al always remember to uh, follow best practice. Don't forget to keep the proxy it itself monitored with Zabbix agent, of course. Remember the last access requires the proxy name. I recommend to use a, a macro here. And uh, make sure that uh, this item is uh, evaluated correctly. Also, monitor proxy connectivity, ping its router or its firewall from Zabbix server, so you can determine if it's a connectivity issues or other. And if you CSO allow you, um, use passive proxies. So we covered the, the agent part, the proxy part, what about the server? How do you handle Zabbix server connectivity issues? Of course, if Zabbix main connectivity goes down, what, do you could, what could you expect? A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, connection proxy alarms of course, you are the Zabbix administrator. You can say, okay, this must be, it must be a connectivity, a connectivity issue, but your customer does not have the big picture, so for him, it is a, a false positive. How can we deal with that? The idea is to how to detecting connectivity problems, and preventing alerts to be fired. So Zabbix server can ping uh, uh, three hosts, for example, uh, gate, two gateway and one uh, uh, internet host. And if uh, two of them are down, he, he can say that his network is isolated. And what can we do with this information? Just put a dependency between the Zabbix proxy template trigger 
and this new trigger. So very easy, very simple, very effective. We tested it on a wide range of deployments and configuration, and uh, uh, the, the main benefit is that all logic is stored into templates, so you don't need to uh, tune or uh, apply manual configuration to your hosts. Okay, to finish, uh, let me share with you some uh, lesson we have learned in uh, manage the services provider environments. They are quite, quite important to the project uh, uh, success. The first one, do not overwhelm your users. Please keep an eye on this metric, which is the number of alerts per user per day. You can see it in the Zabbix report section. And I recommend to stay below 15, 20, alerts per day. The second one, keep your user informed about changes in your monitoring environment because they expect a predictable behavior. And if you change some threshold, if you had some new templates, you have to inform them. For example, new host, you can use auto-registration action, uh, new discover entities, new triggers, and so on. It's not so easy to uh, get uh, automatic notification about these events, but if you are interested, uh, we can share some uh, details uh, after. And last, adopt a consistent criteria to classify your triggers. This is an, this is an example, works uh, very well for us, but you can define your own. For example, if uh, my trigger detects internal monitor event, I will classify it with, as not classified. <laughs> if I want to track uh, uh, known problem haven't, which uh, I, I could be interested in. This is uh, information severity. Warning is uh, to uh, track uh, unusual condition, which does not have impact on user services. If there, there is a uh, user service with imminent failure, which is going to fail in the, in the very next future, I will classify as average. If the service has already failed, choose high severity. And we reserved the disaster severity for triggers which uh, um, uh, detect a potential data loss, like a database system running out of space or something like that. And so you can associate also the expected response time for, from your team. Uh, basing on uh, the, the severity you define it. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Any questions? No question. Okay, thank you very much.